morning and welcome to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ from our sanctuary here at Lake Harvey United Baptist Church. My name is Pastor Mary Ivanov and I'm grateful to serve here. It's good to be here with a small crew this morning and I'm grateful to them. We're grateful that you're here too and grateful to be able to worship together uh, even in this way. So we invite you to come and if you're watching this morning and greet one another. Today we begin a series uh, called Old School Party Time, looking at the importance of celebration in scripture. And you can see that our altar area looks a little bit different than it did last week. I want to thank our worship team uh, for transforming that area for us for this series. Today uh, we'll look at the holy days that God called the Israelites to worship, to, to observe, and why they're so important. And why times of celebration continue to be so important in our lives. Perhaps uh, you felt that especially over these past few months. Uh, maybe like me, you've seen drive-by birthday celebrations, Zoom weddings, socially distanced graduation parties, and things like that. And even though we may not be able to celebrate as usual, celebration matters. Uh, party time is holy time. It's special time. So I invite you, if you have a candle this morning where you are to light it, we uh, lit our uh, candle as a reminder of the light of Christ that gathers us and guides us. And I want you to take a moment to remember that the peace of Christ is with us wherever we are. And share that peace of Christ, whether uh, you are with others, you can offer that to one another, uh, or whether you are alone, know that Christ's love and peace abide with us. So as we consider the festivals that the Israelites celebrated, there were times when they had to travel to the temple uh, in Jerusalem, and often they would sing songs together on the way. And many of the songs are recorded in the Psalms, and so I invite you to hear one of those this morning, uh, Psalm 121, and I'm grateful to Dave Lorenz uh, for serving as our worship leader this morning. Good morning. Hear this call to worship. I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and earth. He will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. Beautiful promise for us as we gather for worship. The holy days that the Israelites celebrated were focused on remembering God's faithfulness and holiness. And so we'll sing together songs of praise and thanksgiving this morning. Uh, three of them as kind of a set of praise songs. Uh, we'll start with two verses of Great is Thy Faithfulness. We'll sing one verse of Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. And then we'll sing two verses of Ten Thousand Reasons. Bless the Lord. So I invite you to join us uh, in in spirit and music together as we praise God.
uh, school year, some of us in person, some of us virtual, some of us at home. Uh, so we want to just uh, cover that in prayer and we invite you to be part of that outside uh, next Sunday, 1230. And also just to call for uh, those, the information, contact information for college students, for students who are pursuing uh, education beyond uh, high school. We want to keep in touch with them and uh, make sure that we're supporting them as well. So send us those, that information if you could to our office. Uh, it's wonderful to be able to, to stay connected. Sometimes it's easy for us to forget the importance of celebrating. And uh, as we think about uh, God calling the Israelites to celebrate and how important that was for their rhythm of life, uh, I invite us to center our hearts this morning. This is a video called Restore Celebration. Take a look. <laughs> As I thought about uh, that video and the way that God designed those celebrations to work, it was a rhythm of work and rest and celebration and how important that is for us. So we'll continue to talk about that this morning, but I would invite you this morning to join your heart with mine in prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, in whom we live and move and have our being, you created us for yourself so that our hearts are restless until they find rest in you. Turn our hearts to you so we live faithfully. Give us strength and purpose so that nothing can come between us seeking to do your will and follow your way. Guide us in your grace and help us to celebrate and choose joy. Help us to see clearly in your light and to find perfect freedom in serving you and others. Amen. I want to invite uh, the kids to just uh, join me. Hopefully they're there. Uh, first of all, I want to make sure that we say good morning. So on the count of three, um, if wherever you are, kids, say good morning, and we'll hope the people around you respond with good morning. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Excellent, excellent. So I want to remind you that um, even though we're not talking about our friends, the prophets, anymore, you can still send in your pictures of the flat prophet if you have that, doing whatever you're doing with you. Um, and remember that the prophets help us to follow God. So that's a wonderful thing. Now today we're going to talk about something else uh, from the New Testament, from the Old Testament. And if you have your Bible near you, there are um, uh, the first five books of the, the Old Testament are called the Torah. And the third book of those five books is called Leviticus, and that's where we're going to read today. So if you have your Bible, you can uh, go through Genesis and Exodus, and then you come to Leviticus, and we're going to be in chapter 23, and we're going to talk about some of the festivals or the parties or the celebrations that the Israelites, uh, that God called the Israelites to observe, to celebrate together, and how important they were. 
So what I want you to know is the other reason they're so important is because they're holy days. Now, you might know that word holiday. Holiday literally means holy day. That's the, the word kind of together. Holiday is a holy day. And when we talk about these festivals, we know that Jesus would have practiced all these festivals. And we have lots of stories uh, from the Gospels, from the New Testament, where Jesus is gathering with other people to celebrate them. So I have a, a book that I'm going to share with you this morning. It's called Here is the World, and it has, uh, it has some information about these holidays that we're going to talk about in Leviticus. So here is the world. Here are your parents with arms open wide. Here are your siblings who stand by your side. Here is the rabbi with blessings to share. Here is a wish and a hope and a prayer. So a rabbi is like a Jewish pastor, the Jewish religious leader. And this is a time when the, the baby is being named. It's an important day in their lives. And this is the Sabbath. We're going to talk about the Sabbath a little bit today. Here are two candles with flames burning bright. Here is the challah we eat Friday night. The Sabbath is a special time when uh, everybody stops from working and they rest and they worship together. Here is the yarmulke, here is the shawl, here is the synagogue open to all. The synagogue is kind of like the church where they worship together. Here are some clouds and a cool autumn breeze. Here are the leaves falling down from the trees. Here is the shofar, its sound pure and sweet. Here are some apples and honey to eat. And they blow the shofar at Rosh Hashanah, which is like the New Year's Day for the Jewish community. So it's like a happy New Year celebration. Here is your family all dressed in white. Here is the breakfast to eat with delight. And this is at Yom Kippur, which is a day when people pray and they ask God for forgiveness. And uh, when they gather afterward, they break their fast. They have a meal together and celebrate. Here is the shuka, its roof made of twigs. Here are some grapes, pomegranates, and figs. And this is shukot, which is the festival of the booze or the tabernacles or the shelter. And I wonder if any of you have ever made a shelter that looks like this. Uh, this is a reminder for all of uh, the, the Jewish people that God was with them as they went, were in the wilderness together. Here is the Torah more precious than gold. Here are the songs and the stories of old. Here is the snow on a, of a fierce winter storm. Here we are snuggled in cozy and warm. Here is a menorah with candles to light. Here are some latkes. Come take the first bite. And some of you may have heard of Hanukkah, that's the festival of light that's usually celebrated around the same time that we celebrate Christmas. Here is some dirt and some seeds to be sown. Here are some trees that are already grown. Here's a parade, come and march with the crowd. Here is a grogger to shake nice and loud. And this is a celebration, you can tell. Everybody looks like they're very, very happy. This is Purim, which uh, is a reminder of the, the story in Esther, when Esther saves the people. Here are the flowers that bloom in the spring. Here are the birds that have come back to sing. Here is the Haggadah to put at each chair. Here is the matzah that's baked with such care. And this is the Passover meal that we talk about. Uh, that's the, the same meal that Jesus shared with his disciples. Uh, the Last Supper, we, we remember that during Holy Week, right before Easter. Here is a harvest of ripe golden wheat. Here are some blitzes and milk for a treat. And this is called Shavuot. It's a harvest festival, giving thanks to God for the harvest, for all the food that's grown. Here is a summer day, sunny and hot. Here is a picnic to share on Shabbat, which is that Sabbath day, that day of rest. Here is the sun beaming down from on high. Here are the stars and the moon in the sky. Here is the world, ever changing and new, spinning with joy at the wonder of you. So that's a, just a lovely book that gives us uh, a reminder that of all those special celebrations that are important to us. And you probably notice there that they go through all the seasons. Maybe you have a favorite season of the year. I love fall, so I'm, I'm getting really excited 
uh, for, for fall to come. And maybe you have a favorite holiday or fe favorite celebration like Christmas or Easter uh, throughout the year. Those are really special times because they remind us of the joy of life. And they're special times that we set apart. We usually celebrate them at the same times every year. So that's really important. And I think that God wants us to have those kinds of celebrations because when we celebrate, we also remember uh, all the blessings in our lives. And those blessings come from God. So let's pray this morning. God, thank you for all those times when we can celebrate, whether it's holidays, whether it's the special days like birthdays or anniversaries or the things that we get to do with our families. Thank you for all those special times that we can share because they give us lots of joy and they remind us that you love us and that we share your love with other people. So be with us, guide us, we pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, and our friend. Amen. You, uh, Dave shared with us our scripture earlier, so you've seen him, but I'm grateful that Dave is here to serve as our worship leader. He's going to share a God moment with us this morning. When uh, Pastor Mary invited me to be here today to uh, talk about celebrations, I'm sure that she had expected I talk about travel and tourism and, and all the many celebrations we're, we're really missing right now. Uh, but I'm actually not going to talk about that. Uh, I'm going to tell, tell you about something that happened years ago. It was an unplanned thing, but it was a celebration all the same. Uh, Bertie and I, uh, my wife and I, had been down in Florida uh, visiting our parents, and our son was just a little guy back then. And we were, we had a great time down there. We were driving back, I think it was on I-75, it had to be um, the route we used to take often. And then anybody who's ever taken that, that drive, you know what a frustrating drive that can be, bumper to bumper traffic, especially on a hot, sunny day, can be really frustrating and difficult. And we were moving along, and, and all of a sudden, we started seeing brake lights come up. So everybody came to a stop, and we kind of rolled to a stop, got to this kind of a small little hill. And then I realized that um, for as far as I could see in front of us, there were brake lights, and cars just stopped on, you know, the entire thing. I looked in the mirror, it's the same thing behind us by that time. The, the travelers had, <clears throat> had just stopped completely. And, and we, we sat in the car for a little while, you know, complaining, oh, this is going to put us off schedule, and you know, what's this going to be? It's uncomfortable, it's hot in here, it rolled down the windows. And after a little while, something really interesting happened. We, we recognized that there was probably a bad accident up there, that somebody was going through a bad time. And we were just being inconvenienced. But something really interesting happened. Um, before you know it, people started to get out of their cars. And uh, they started to, to talk. And we noticed the kids all kind of get out of the cars and they were playing in the, the grass beside the road. The footballs came out, the frisbees came out, baseball gloves and baseballs. And kids who had never met each other ever and will never again. We're, we're spending time together, and the adults on the road, we were opening up the coolers, and we were sharing beverages and snacks, and this went on for a couple hours. And what happened in this really you know, inconvenient time was a pop-up celebration of humanity. People from all colors and backgrounds and religions all came together, and it was a special time. It was not planned by us, but it was a special time for a lot of people, including us. You know, we, we find ourselves right now in a, a really challenging time in our country, in the world, with the virus. I know there's a lot of fear out there, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of people are scared. And, and I think about this kind of corollary that, you know, we, knew, we didn't know what was going to happen that day. We assumed we were going to be fine and get through it. As I assume now, we're going to be fine to get through all these things as well. But I know it's a, it's, a, it's a scary time for a lot of people. And as we've heard earlier today, and we're going to hear more of later on, you know, God doesn't want us to be frozen by fear. Uh, he wants us to act on it, to do what we can, to help others. But we should always try to recognize those wonderful things that might just happen along the road. 
You never know what's coming before you. You should try, instead of being frozen by fear, try to recognize the fact that uh, God will provide opportunities for us to celebrate. We should take those opportunities. And we should recognize through celebration the many ways that we're blessed. I want to thank Dave for sharing this morning, and as we come to a time of offering, uh, as I was thinking about these celebrations that the Israelites were called to observe, many of them uh, were tied to the harvest, to, to giving thanks to God for all that God had provided. And so uh, God called the Israelites to offer their best. So that becomes part of how we think about our offering time, too. What are we offering? What, what's the best that we can offer to God with our time, our talent, and our treasure? And I want to thank you for offering all of those things, including gifts of care and compassion and prayer. Uh, they matter so much uh, to our church community, to our larger community, uh, to uh, all our world. Thank you for supporting our mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world and the ministry that happens here. And I mentioned that this week, uh, ReShare started. That's an outreach beyond our walls and I'm grateful that we can offer it. The same is true uh, for uh, the gathering here last Tuesday night, uh, led by our education team, lots of families, chalk drawings on our parking lot, and decorated bikes out here, uh, just having a wonderful time. And Dave mentioned uh, kids just sort of getting together and enjoying time together. There was this kind of bike parade that just sort of popped up, uh, and it was just a wonderful time to be together. I also want to thank you on behalf of our missions team uh, as they were able with the funds that they have to give uh, a gift of $500 to support the feet and seat drive, uh, new socks and new underwear for many local kids and youth through Mission for Area People. Our witness is a sign of hope and grace in our community and beyond it and it reminds us and others uh, that God provides in so many ways. So take this time to think about your offering Perhaps to prepare it, you can also give online at our website, lakeharborumc.org. And again, I'm so grateful uh, for your faithfulness and giving. The other thing that we offer during this time are our God moments, and I mentioned before that they are one way that we witness to God's work in our lives. And many times they are moments of celebration uh, that remind us of God's presence. They really help us to stay connected during this time, too. So please write one down now, uh, even send it in so that we can share it next week. And as we uh, read those and celebrate that witness together, uh, our praise team will lead us in a song called Great Are You, Lord. You'll hear them singing as we uh, read those God moments.
people must again stop all their ordinary work to observe an official day for Holy Assembly. So this was an agricultural festival during the barley harvest in a time when Jewish men would travel to Jerusalem. It was a holy pilgrimage time. It was a time to remember God's saving work in the Exodus when the Israelites were told to put the blood of the lamb on their doorposts to be saved as they were led to freedom from slavery in Egypt and God began to form them as a holy nation. Unleavened bread was eaten as a reminder that the Israelites had to hurry to leave without waiting for their bread to rise. And remember that Jesus shared the Passover meal with his friends before he was crucified. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, our Passover Lamb. The next one is the celebration of first fruits, or Shavuot. Then the Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. When you enter the land I am giving you, and you harvest its first crops, Bring the priest a bundle of grain from the first cutting of your grain harvest. Now there's more that was offered, if you keep reading in that section, including a lamb. And this festival was celebrated at the beginning of the harvest. Giving the first fruit of the crop was a reminder that God is the giver of the whole harvest. It was a celebration of God's abundance and even new life. And there's a connection to the celebration of Easter as we consider Jesus' resurrection and the new life he offers. Next was the Feast of Weeks. From the day after the Sabbath, the day you bring the bundle of uh, grain to be lifted up as a special offering, count off seven full weeks. Keep counting until the day after the seventh Sabbath, 50 days later. Then present an offering of new grain to the Lord. From wherever you live, bring two loaves of bread to be lifted up before the Lord as a special offering. When you harvest the crops of your land, do not harvest the grain along the edges of your fields, and do not pick up what the harvesters drop. Leave it for the poor and the foreigners living among you. I am the Lord your God. Just like the festival of the first harvest, there's more that was offered, including animals. And this was another time for Jewish men to go to Jerusalem and rejoice over the full harvest at the end of the spring season. And you might notice that this happens after a week of weeks, 50 days after the harvest begins. So the Feast of Weeks is what the people were celebrating when the day of Pentecost came in Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit came upon the people. It was a spiritual harvest of sorts. And don't miss the command from God to leave the edges of the field unharvested for those in need. God is concerned for the most vulnerable, the poor, and those from outside of the community community, making sure they have what they need. Next is Rosh Hashanah, or the Feast of Trumpets. The Lord said to Moses, give the following instructions to the people of Israel. On the first day of the appointed month in early autumn, you are to observe a day of complete rest. It will be an official day for holy assembly, a day commemorated with loud blasts of a trumpet. You must do no ordinary work on that day. Instead, you are to present special gifts to the Lord. So blowing the trumpet was a call to gather and remember God's victory. Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets, was like New Year's Day for the Israelites, a time of celebration and praise. The next one is Yom Kippur, or the Feast of the Day of Atonement. Then the Lord said to Moses, Be careful to celebrate the Day of Atonement on the tenth day of that same month, nine days after the Festival of Trumpets. You must observe it as an official day for holy assembly, a day to deny yourselves and present special gifts to the Lord. Do no work during that entire day because it is the day of atonement when offerings of purification are made for you, making you right with the Lord your God. So the day of atonement was a day of fasting and self-examination and confession and repentance and forgiveness being made right with God, and God is clear that this day is essential for the people, even threatening to cut them off if they don't observe it, as you read on. Today we know it is Yom Kippur, and we see a connection to our season of Lent, when we turn to God in prayer and repentance, trusting in God's forgiveness through Christ's sacrifice. The next is uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, or booths, or shelters, called Shukot. Remember that this seven-day festival to the Lord, the Festival of Shelters, begins on the 15th day of the appointed month, after you have harvested all the produce of the land. 
The first day and the eighth day of the festival will be days of complete rest. On the first day, gather branches from magnificent trees, palm fronds, boughs from leafy trees, and willows that grow by the streams. Then celebrate with joy before the Lord your God for seven days. You must observe this festival to the Lord for seven days every year. This is a permanent law for you, and it must be observed in the appointed month, from generation to generation. For seven days, you must live outside in little shelters. All native-born Israelites must live in shelters. This will remind each new generation of Israelites that I made their ancestors live in shelters when I rescued them from the land of Egypt. I am the Lord, your God. So this is the third festival when Jewish men would come to Jerusalem. It was a time to remember God's shelter and provision after the Exodus, as the Israelites had been in the wilderness making their way to the Promised Land. It fell at the end of the fall harvest, when the fruits of their labor could be enjoyed, and it was a time to give thanks to God. So Moses gave the Israelites these instructions regarding the annual festivals of the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. God, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Now, I know that's a lot of information, and Leviticus probably isn't our first choice when it comes to a riveting part of Scripture. We assume it's heavy on rules and regulations, or only about what people can't do, and certainly there are many directives for the Israelites, but it's all aimed at a specific purpose. God, who is holy, calls God's people to be holy. God saved them and formed them into a holy nation, and God offers a plan for how they can be holy. And if you read through Leviticus, you'll find a lot about the role of priests and issues around purity, including the moral code relating to how we care for the poor and how we seek justice. That didn't start with the prophets, but was part of God's call to the Israelites from the beginning. But Leviticus also includes a lot about rituals, a lot of detail, a lot of repetition. There were specific ways for the people to offer thanksgiving to God and to express sorrow for their sin, special offerings that they were called to bring to God personally, and there were specifics about feast days, times of celebration, to retell and remember the story of God's salvation in their lives. And the Hebrew word for feast or festival means divine appointment. They were called to celebrate because God said so. It is a time when God said, do it because I said so. There was a rhythm to it that went along with the seasons. It was a time ordered and invited by God, a holy time that was literally set apart for them to gather together for worship and celebration. It was like a really big family reunion where they could remember who they were, where they came from, and maybe even who they could be with God. Celebrations do that for us. They keep us grounded in what's important and their relationship with God that we have. For the Israelites, that was important in these festivals. It kept them grounded in that relationship with God who had saved them, and it was paramount in their lives. So when they came together, it was time to remember who they were together and who God was, how God had saved them and called them to be holy together. And it was time to remember God's faithfulness and care as they depended on God for the harvest. Any of you who are gardeners or have any farming background know that that is true. We depend on something beyond ourselves for that harvest. Ultimately, we depend on all the things that come together to make it good. But for the Israelites, it was dependent. They were dependent on God. They claimed their history with God and could trust in God to continue to lead them in the future. That's why these celebrations were so important. So Leviticus talks a lot about holiness being set apart for a purpose. The people are called to be holy. There are holy things and unholy things. There are holy places, like the temple, and there are holy times, specific times set apart for remembering and rejoicing, and it's a reminder that God rules over time, too. Time is sacred, and time set aside to celebrate is holy and sacred and meaningful and important. Celebrations keep us grounded, to be sure, but they also keep us going because they offer important perspective on the whole of our lives. They connect us 
that got into each other. So I'd like to share a picture with you, actually two of them, that was taken almost two years ago. This, these are two pictures from my parents' 50th wedding anniversary. We celebrated, we had an open house in my hometown where they had lived their whole married life and it was glorious. When my sisters and I talked about doing it, we weren't sure if it was something they'd want to do, but they agreed, and so we put it together. Nothing too fancy, just cake and coffee, but time set aside. And you can see in my dad's expression as he talks to one of our family members, the whole day was fantastic. It was incredible to see our family, to see many of their longtime friends and classmates, to see our amazing church family and country neighbors show up to celebrate with us. And it really was holy time. It was time to give thanks and appreciate their life together, to recognize the support and love from others that was a part of their marriage, and when I think back on that day, especially now after my dad passed away this past February, I am so grateful for that holy time. We still talk about it, my mom and my sister and I, and how important it was and how thankful we are that we did it when we could. All time is holy time, but celebrations help us to remember that. Life with God isn't designed to be devoid of happiness and celebration, and that word in Leviticus is clear. It's clear that celebration is part of God's call in our lives. Party time is holy time. Work is important to be sure, but rest is too. And again, we'll talk some more about Sabbath in September. But that call to rest is a call to enjoy life. It isn't about being repressed or prohibited from doing the things we enjoy, but about being free to rest and celebrate and live in the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. One commentator writes, a Sabbath or a festival was like a kiss between lovers. It gathered into a special moment what is always true. I love that sentiment. A Sabbath or a festival was like a kiss between lovers. It gathered into a special moment what is always true. Celebrations offer structure to our lives and remind us to remember God's goodness in all the time of our lives. Even for the Israelites, the festivals recounted both good times like the Exodus, even though there was some difficulty in there, of course, and difficult times like wandering in the wilderness for years. God's presence and care was the constant for them. So beyond keeping us grounded in what's important and keeping us going, celebrations point us to the source of our real joy, of eternal joy, more than happiness, but a deeper sense of joy because of God's presence and care for us. I asked the Facebook world why celebrations are important. That's the best way to get lots of responses at once. And here are some highlights that affirm that sense of holy time. Celebrations are a time to find joy in someone's life or in our own life and share that joy with others through fellowship and prayer and acts of kindness. Celebrations build community. One person said, celebrations mean eating for me. Breaking the monotony, recognizing extraordinary times in our lives, rejoicing and recognizing those blessings and milestones which are gifts from God. Honoring what's good and positive. Celebrations often founded in tradition that cements family and community relationships. Happiness, joy, renewal, hope. Sometimes celebrations are quiet, someone wrote, even tinged with deep sadness. Sometimes experienced alone, but celebration is the ability to look back, even at an incredibly devastating event, and realize that you've survived. There is still so much more to work through, but you can celebrate a slight glimmer of hope in the future, even quietly and alone. Celebrations can be joyous or somber, someone wrote, where people share stories and pictures and memories and laughter or tears, rituals, food, music, dancing, sometimes gifts. They're important for bringing people together and sharing memories and blessings of the past and hope for the future. Celebrating a birthday or an anniversary when, people, when the people being celebrated are there physically is important, but one person wrote, I also like to celebrate those who are no longer here physically on days like birthdays by finding some way to do something positive and helpful for someone else as I honor their memory. It's a tangible way to celebrate the impact of that person on my life. 
Celebration means, means taking time to notice with joy the achievements of myself or others, someone said. Celebration means family time and the joy it provides. It's important because it builds lasting memories. Getting together with family and friends to honor and acknowledge important times, usually joyful, but it's also important to celebrate the lives of loved ones we've lost to death. It reminds us of all the, the good things they brought into our lives, and it keeps the memories fresh. And as I talked to my mom this week, my parents' anniversary day is tomorrow. She said, you know, that day that we celebrated was so special, but even Dad's funeral was a celebration. It was wonderful to gather with people and to celebrate his life. Celebrations are a time to be happy, to honor someone, and their accomplishments, to make someone truly feel special and cared for. Or it's lifting up a person or situation that makes us pleased, proud, and happy. Celebrations help us get out of the routine and share food and fellowship with other people and make others feel special, just enjoying time together. One person said, celebration is an appreciation for and someone said, sometimes celebration marks an official end to a period of trial, like the party for the prodigal son or the party for the last chemo treatment. Sometimes it marks the beginning of a new adventure, like a bon voyage party or a wedding shower or a housewarming. A celebration, someone wrote, is a bookmark that we put in our book of life to mark and remember where we've been, what we've done, those we did it with, and what we accomplished or overcame. So many wonderful reflections on what celebrations mean, and really, that's what it means for us. That's that structure, that sense of being grounded, that sense of being, of keeping going, and finding the joy, and celebrating together. Certainly this year has changed the way we think about celebrations, or at least how we celebrate together, but the purpose is the same, and perhaps it's even more important. So beyond just asking for those reflections, I asked for pictures from celebrations during the past few months, and here are a few. This is baby Ellie, who was born in June. This is a graduation party in 2020. A birthday party, 60s. 2020 graduation, socially distanced, and a send-off for the military. A long-distance Zoom wedding, complete with confetti thrown at the camera. A 16th birthday card shower. A 20th wedding anniversary celebrated in our parking lot. A drive-by for friends. A long-distance birthday celebration, even blowing out the candle together. And a birthday, a 61st birthday for Tom, and a birthday to celebrate with his family. Friends, party time really is holy time. So I pray that we would embrace the holiness of celebration. Even in the midst of difficult times, celebration is so vital. I pray that we would allow God to bless us and others through it, remembering God's presence and care with us always. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, how grateful we are for the gift of celebration, for the reminder that we live with the joy of the Lord as our strength. Even in the midst of these days, Help us to see those opportunities to celebrate. We lift our hearts in faith to you because we know you hear our prayers, you hold us close, and you hold close all those in need around the world. And we give you thanks and praise your holy name, O oh God, and today we pray for situations that sometimes make it difficult to remember your goodness and your faithfulness, even as we hold in tension that call to celebrate, we pray. We pray for those who struggle with addiction. We pray for those 
who are battling it and all who love them. For those living in war and terror, for those grieving losses, for those affected by natural disasters, for those fighting illness and those caring for them, for those who are feeling lonely, isolated, and afraid. For those who are feeling exhausted and tired, we pray for an atmosphere of respect and working together in the political arena and everywhere else. We pray for hearts that ache, hurt by broken relationships and unmet expectations. We pray for our church family, that you would keep us connected by your spirit, O oh God, and we pray for your church in every place that we would offer hope, that we would rest in your promises. And we pray that you would help us to live faithfully, praying for the things that worry us, praying for our world, but also seeing those opportunities to celebrate, to give thanks, to have hope. Dear God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and you continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring healing to all wounds, make whole all that is broken, speak truth to all illusion, and shed light in every darkness that all creation will see your glory and know you more. We pray this in the name of Jesus, the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as we go out today, I invite you to join me in this song, Go Forth for God. We'll sing together.
for us. Go with God in peace and love and strength and joy. May we remember God's faithfulness in every moment of every day and know that God is the Lord of all time and space. May we celebrate with hope, trusting in God's presence and grace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace and make peace. And as you go this morning, one more song about the importance of joy. This is joy for Viking and country.